Hi, welcome to Jess Desserts. My name is Jessie Ward. For my senior project called Capstone at my school, the Cambridge School of Weston, I'll be making various desserts for you today. Today we're going to be making apple pie, baklava, and tiramisu. Let's get to work. So first we're going to make the crust for the apple pie. So take two cups of flour and two-thirds cup of shortening and put it in a medium-sized mixing bowl. And then add two good pinches of salt. Two. With a pastry blender, you're going to mix the flour and the shortening. And you're going to get the shortening into little pea-sized lumps. So we're going to pour ice-cold water into this shortening and flour mixture so we can get one giant lump of crust. So, like so. It has to be really cold because that way the crust is flakier. It actually helps make the pie better. And when it gets too, too lumpy to mix with a fork, you're going to want to mix it with your hands. So pour a little bit more water on there and start mixing with your hands. Now, if the crust is a little moist, you can always put more flour on. If it's a little dry, pour more water in. So now that you're done making your crust, let it rest in the fridge while you're making your apples. While the crust is cooling in the fridge, we're going to prepare the apples. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel, core, and slice the apples. And then we're going to mix it with some sugar, cinnamon, and flour. And then they'll be prepared. We're going to be using a variety of apples. We're going to be using Granny Smith apples, Gala apples, and Cortland apples. And I believe that a variety of apples helps make the pie better. To peel, core, and slice these apples, we're going to be using a very handy tool called the peeler core slicer. So I'm going to bring on a big bowl and some lemon juice so that the apples don't turn brown. Here we go. And now we're going to peel, core, and slice the apples using the coolest tool in the world. Take an apple, put the core on there. You want to rotate. And you can see, as you can see, it's peeling the apple and coring the apple and slicing the apple. So you get something like this, a bunch of slices of apples. It's really handy, easy to use. Yeah, a lot better. And you want to be sure to take off the, the parts that still have skin on them, because skin does not taste good. So now that we've peeled, cored, and sliced two apples, we have to pour a little bit of lemon juice so the apples don't get brown. The reason we use lemon juice is because the lemon juice coats the apples so the air can't oxidize the apples and turn them brown. It's nice to have different sizes of these pieces of apple so that way when you're filling the pie, you can eat, fill in nooks and crannies with different sizes. So now we're going to bring on the sugar, flour, and cinnamon to make the apples a little bit tastier. So we're going to pour in the sugar and some flour, and we're going to give the apples a couple shakes of cinnamon. I'm using two-thirds of a cup of sugar. Pour on some flour, about half a cup. And then we're going to do about five shakes of cinnamon, so one, two, three, four, five. You know what? Maybe six. And now we're going to mix it all together. All right. Make sure you don't see any dry ingredients. The best way I know to te test the apples is pick one up and eat it. No, yeah, it's pretty good. So now we're going to put this off to the side. And we're going to roll out our crust and finally make our pie. What you're going to want to do is you're going to, going to want to cut the dough in half so you can have a top crust and a bottom crust. See, it splits evenly. You know, you don't have to cut all the way through, but make sure you have two separate pieces. You're going to want to lay down a surface of flour. So, you know, sprinkle flour on top of your counter. Mix around a bit, you know, make sure it's uh, pie-sized. Don't be afraid to use a little too much flour. You can always clean it up later. Take one half of your dough and put it on the counter. Then sprinkle flour onto your dough. Grab your rolling pin and roll out your dough. It would roll a couple times vertically. 
sprinkle on a little more flour. You want to flip it and turn it hor so it's horizontal now, so you can more evenly roll out your dough. Sprinkle on flour. Don't be afraid to sprinkle on too much flour. I can't stress that enough. So here we go. And what I like to do is I like to do that step one more time and flip it. So flour coats all the surfaces. Oops. Now you're just going to roll out your dough. You know, go diagonally on both diagonals. Go from side to side. Whatever you need to stretch out your dough so that it can cover the plate. You want it to be bigger than the plate itself. The one way to test to see if your bottom crust is big enough is to look at the plate, place the plate on top of the dough, and if it circles around the outside like this, then your dough is done. So now what you're going to do in order to put your bottom crust onto the pie plate is you're going to roll the, the crust onto the rolling pin and then roll it onto the pie plate. So you're going to very carefully, you're going to pick up your dough, you're going to roll it onto your rolling pin, pick it up, and then roll it back onto your pie plate. And you want to kind of scooch it in a little bit so that it covers the actual pie plate like this. So, as you can see, all the little corners are filled of the pie plate. You're always going to have some extra, some extra dough. So you just want to like rip that off very carefully. All right, there we go. Put that to the side. If ever you feel you're a little short on crust or you need to fill in a patch, you take a piece of extra dough and you fill in where you need to fill it in. And you just press it down. There we go. And there's your bottom crust. Next, we're going to fill our pie with the apples we prepared earlier. So we're going to take our apples right here. We're going to take a big handful at a time, you know, shake it a bit. There should be a little extra apple juice at the bottom. So you want to make sure you don't have too much juice in your pie. You're going to want to put it into your pie plate, spread it very carefully, make sure it all stays in the pie. Take another handful, shake it a little bit if you feel like there's, gonna, there's too much juice. I'm going to put it in the pie again, you know, spread it out, break some pieces off so you can fill in your nooks and crannies. And you know, if you have some extra apples, that's really okay. You can always snack on them. So now we're going to build the top crust. I'm going to move the apple pie over here. Take out our next half, sprinkle our counter with flour again, and we're going to put the pie down. Same process as before, sprinkle your crust with a little bit of flour and roll it out, you know, twice or three times vertically. Sprinkle a little more flour on there. Flip it. More flour, you know. Here we go. All right, again, test it by placing the pie on the sheet, and it looks like it's ready to go. Same process as before. Roll the crust carefully onto your rolling pin. Roll your rolling pin back. Pick up the crust and roll it out. Great. Again, we have a lot of extra. Same, same as before, rip it off carefully. All right, there we go. Now what you're going to do is you're going to want to fold your, your two crusts together so it looks a little more formal. Curl your two crusts up and pinch it to the plate very softly, though, and just keep going around your pie, pinching as you go. And that's looking a lot more like a pie. So now we're going to cut five slits in the apple pie to signify that it is, in fact, an apple pie. The reason it signifies that it's an apple pie is because when you cut an apple in half, you see five seeds in the shape of a star. So we're going to cut very carefully. Go one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't have to be super neat, just like this. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the crust, uh, this cr part of the crust, in tin foil so that it doesn't burn. So you're going to cut kind of a big piece of tin foil and you're going to want to rip it vertically, not horizontally. Stick the two pieces of tin foil together. So now that you have your long piece of tin foil, you're going to want to wrap the crust. When I talk about the crust, I mean the outer edge of the pie. There we go, really carefully. All right, now you're going to want to fold it over, over the actual crust. And now your pie is wrapped. So you're going to want to put the pie in the oven for 25 minutes with the tin foil on. Then take the tin foil off and cook it in the oven for 15 more minutes. And now we're going to make some baklava. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the sauce that goes on top of the baklava that makes the baklava very sweet. So we're going to take a cup of sugar, we're going to dump it into a, a medium sized saucepan. We're going to take a cup of honey, we're going to dump it in as well. You know, if you need to scrape out the extra honey, just whip out a spatula, scrape it out. There we go. Because there's a lot of honey you miss. You're going to take three quarters of a cup of water, dump it in. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take a tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice. So, you know, get out your juicer, juice the lemon. And save the rind. Don't throw it out yet. We're going to knead it. Measure out a tablespoon. tablespoon and now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the rind which you have and you're gonna get some lemon rind in there yeah. if you're more of a lemon person add more uh, and then the last step is you're gonna take you know uh, maybe one two three shakes of cinnamon I'm going to mix it all together with a wooden spoon over the stove. We're going to cook the sauce on medium heat until the sugar dissolves. And then we're going to heat the, the sauce on low heat for 10 minutes so it saturates a little. So what we want is we want it to turn into one giant solution, not have it separate out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to melt two sticks of butter so we can layer the phyllo on top of each other. This is the butter that's going to help the phyllo layer stick together. So unwrap your butter and quickly melt it on the stove. We're going to melt the butter so it's nice and spreadable and we can coat the sheets of phyllo with butter. So now we're going to prepare the nuts. Here we've chopped up three cups of walnuts and one cup of pecans. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix in some cinnamon. One, two, three, four, uh, five. We're going to take, you know, a couple pinches of salt, maybe two or three. We're going to mix it so it's all mixed in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the nuts off to the side for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lay the phyllo down in the actual pan. So we're going to bring in some phyllo. So, you know, unroll it. So in order to keep the phyllo from drying out, we're going to place a damp cloth over the, the stack of phyllo, like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint the pan with butter. So we have butter melted over here. Uh, and you're going to take a brush and you're going to paint your pan like a thin layer. All right, getting all the nooks and crannies. Be sure to paint the sides. Now you're going to layer your first sheet of phyllo. So you're going to very carefully take a sheet, pick it up. 
And if it breaks a bit, that's all right. And then very carefully lay it down. All right. Now you have your first layer of phyllo. You're going to paint this layer again. So very carefully, be sure not to break it. So you can just pat the brush a little bit. And you're going to want to do this until you have six layers of phyllo. And as you can see, it gets a little sturdier. You don't have to pat down the brush anymore. You can actually paint. And be sure to get the sides, too, because it is also part of the baklava. All right, here we go. All right. So now that we've laid down our sixth layer of phyllo, we're going to pour on some of the nuts, not all of them, so just take a big handful and sprinkle them on, spread it out. You want to get about a third of the mixture in there. There we go. And now that you've laid down your nuts, you're going to take that sauce you prepared earlier and you're going to pour it on. You know, you don't have to cover all of it. So it looks like this. So then you want to repeat the process. So here's your first layer of phyllo. Lay it down. Be super careful because it's very fragile on top of the nuts. Paint it. So you're going to have six layers of phyllo, a layer of nuts, six layers of phyllo, a layer of nuts, six layers of phyllo, a layer of nuts, and then six layers of phyllo on top of that. So you're going to have three layers of nuts and four layers of phyllo. This is our last layer of nuts. Just dump it all in there. Spread it around. So you're going to pour the honey sugar lemon sauce. And just pour a little bit. And we're doing our last layer of phyllo now. So now, pour the rest of, of the sauce on top of the baklava. There we go. And spread it evenly. You know, use the wooden spoon. Before we put the baklava in the oven, we cut it because the phyllo gets very, very cracked easily after it's been put in the oven. So we're just going to pre-cut the diamonds. So just Don't be afraid to put your hands down on top of the baklava so you can hold the pieces of phyllo in place. So now you're going to stick your baklava in the oven for 40 minutes. So now we're going to make the tiramisu. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the egg mascarpone mixture, which is going to coat the bottom of the pan and be our filling for the tiramisu. We're going to separate our eggs. So we want our egg yolks to go in here, and we want our egg whites to go in here. All right. So you want to kind of grab the yolk in your hand and let the white slide out. And then you want to throw your yolk in. So here. It's important that we don't mix the egg whites and the egg yolks. So if a little yolk falls into the whites, just get it out with a spoon. We're going to mix the egg yolks, the mascarpone, and the sugar. So we're just going to dump this in. And that's a pound of mascarpone. Just quickly whip that up. Dump the sugar in. So we want to mix this until it's smooth. So it should like look something like this. 
And now you're done with this portion of the mixture. So now we're going to mix the egg whites. So. The way to test whether the egg whites are whipped enough is to take a spoon and kind of lift the egg white off enough. The next step we're going to do is we're going to pour the egg whites into the egg mixture over here, like so. And we're going to mix in the egg whites. See how it's nice and light and fluffy, and now your egg mixture is done. And this is what you have. So now we're going to build the tiramisu. So we're going to move this over here. We're going to bring on our pan. We're going to put a thin layer of the egg mixture down before we put in our actual cake. And you can tilt your pan a little bit so it spreads out over the whole pan. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your cake. We're using cookies instead of cake in this tiramisu. So you're going to take your cookies and we're going to dip them in coffee, which makes them soft like cake. We're going to lay down the cookies like so. And try to squeeze in the cookies. Now. Once you've laid all your cookies in there, it should look something like this. And the next thing you want to do is you want to put another layer of egg mixture on top of your cookies. So we're doing two layers of cookies and three layers of egg mixture. Okay. Great. There we go. And now we put our final layer of egg mixture on top of the second layer of cookies. Just dump it all. Alright. Again, spread it a little bit. Great. And now we're effectively done with our tiramisu. And just to top it off, we're going to use a little bit of shaved chocolate. So this is a cheese grater, and this is what we're going to use to shave the chocolate. So you now put a couple pieces in. And now you're done with your tiramisu. Now you take your tiramisu and you put it in the fridge for an hour. Stay tuned for our next episode of Just Desserts. See you next week.